Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so thrilled today to be talking all about the Hulu show Baker's Dozen. We have the wonderful Bill Yossis, who is a co-host on the show and also former White House executive pastry chef, restaurant owner and author, and Tamira Ma Maury Housley, who is a self-taught baker and also co-host on the show. Um, and I wanted to start by asking a little bit about what, what the pre-production and preparation looks like for hosting a show like this, because there's so many different aspects coming together. There's what the dynamic between the two of you is going to be. You're obviously both bringing so much to the table and completely different backgrounds within baking and within the culinary world. There's also working with the producers and really understanding what the entire format and flow is going to be, where you're going to jump in and have scripted moments. There's a lot of unscripted moments and interactions mm -hmm. with the contestants as well, um, and, you know, and the environment that you wanted the show to be as well. So I was really interested in, in what those early conversations looked like, both between the two of you, but also in collaboration with the producers and the creative team on the show. Well, Tamara, think, you go first on that one. Okay, Bill. Uh, I feel like Bill and I really got lucky in the sense that we naturally bonded. We have this genuine chemistry and that is being in this business for over 20 years. That is what you want. And when you have that genuine chemistry, it doesn't really feel like work or actually, you know, having fun, but the producers chose us individually. And then we had our first Zoom call. Do you remember that, Bill? Yes, the <laughs> getting to know you. Uh -huh. Yes, where we just kind of got to you know, know each other. And then that is when the magic naturally happened. The producers, along with myself, we really could breathe um, because just talking with Bill, we practiced on some scripts we could see that it was going to be a lot of fun and that is what this show is and and in regards to scripts and you know prepping and meeting the contestants this is where the trust actually came from hulu and the producers they literally just showed us a script and bam one two three ready set go you're going to have 13 bakers. <laughs> They're, you know, going to do some decorating first. You see this amazing, beautiful, gorgeous tent. Only five of them can make it in. So it was very, very quick in the beginning. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So it was kind of lots of improv. But also, you know, we did, we did have the general script. But a lot of the judging and going around and tasting, all improv. Yeah, I think I think what uh, Tamara was talking about there when they told us sort of the the logical sequence of the show, that was kind of explained to us as we were walking towards the set, <laughs> like it was a short walk from the from the parking lot to the set, and we were sort of like, yeah, so what's this about? And um, so I th I think that works out great because it's everything spontaneous then, and it's as much a surprise to us as it was. Uh, I'm sure I, I'm sure they didn't tell much more to the contestants. They just kind of push you out there in front of the camera and you know, hope for the best. And since it was 13 new contestants in every single episode, I mean, that's a huge number of bakers that you got to meet throughout the entire competition. Um, you know, and that first round is obviously pretty fast. They only have about an hour to do that first challenge. Um, and yet you still have to kind of get a sense of their personality, their charisma, and really kind of help to bring them out on camera as well in talking about their process and what they're doing and, and what they envisioned for whatever it is that they're creating in that moment. Um, and so what did that dynamic look like for the two of you and really just having to read each of them very quickly and figure out what they needed from you as presenters and hosts in that moment. That was again, very uh, sort of uh, off the cuff because as we were going to meet them one by one, um, we got their names and maybe a little factoid about them, um, but it left wide open uh, what questions we would ask. So we would often like just concentrate on what they were making right in front of us. And so yeah. that really concentrated on the on the recipe in front of us. And I feel like the producers and, you know, casting did such a great job with the bakers, which made our jobs, you know, a little easier. They all had personalities and, and individually, and they were so creative themselves and with their work. So again, it made it 
so much fun because we were intrigued from the get-go. I particularly loved how each baker had their own style and their style kind of, I don't know, to me reflected their style in baking, which was cool. There was one baker, she literally looked like she was walking out of um, anthropology. She, she looked like an anthropology ad and her decorating her cakes looked like that. I was like, you just, you just need to be like with anthropology. You're, you, you represent them. You're, you're, you're awesome. She was so pretty. And so were her cakes. <laughs> and once you get past that first round and you have just five bakers in the tent and then you're going down to even less in that final round obviously the the stress levels and the tension for these bakers does become higher because there's a lot more at stake in each moment um you know and there are moments where that comes across where something's not going the way that they planned or they forgot to put an ingredient in their oven isn't on um, and at the same time that's also sometimes the point at which you're talking to them and getting a sense of what it is that they're creating um and what would that dynamic look like when you were going into some of these conversations conversations and really having to also create a space and hold a space for them to almost help bring that stress level down in the moment as well. Yeah, we were very aware of this of their, because you did it. Tension. Bill handled it so well. Bill, you have to answer this because you you were amazing when that happened. Well, both Tamara and I have been in competition. So we really, we really felt sympathy for the contestants and, and we really admire what they're doing and, and the effort they put into it. So um, we did definitely not want to sort of upset the apple cart with in the middle of when they're doing something very sensitive. But um, so we would give them time and, and sort of, we, I think had a, a sort of a side eye towards what was going on around the, most of them were ready to be interviewed at that point. So they had put their knives down and they had, if something needed to come out of the oven, they would have pulled it out. So um, they knew that they were going to, you know, be interrupted for three to five minutes. And um, I think in, in a way it gave them a chance to take a breath and really sort of reevaluate what they were doing. Sometimes they would tell us, well, I started out with this, but now that I'm at this stage of progress, I'm going to change to something else. It really brings it brings the viewer right into like that creative process, which I th I think is another um, really interesting part about this show. I also think in general with the job that you're both doing on the show, one of the balancing acts is always making sure that your personality, your charisma, and also the experience that you're being hired for in this realm is coming across on the show, but still keeping the focus on the bakers and what it is that they're trying to achieve within the competition. And I think you both achieve that really well. And one example is that moment, Bill, where one of the contestants realized that they only made 12 instead of 13. And you choose that moment to share a moment in the White House when you were two meals short when you played it up <laughs> <laughs> and that again you know it's it's bringing your experience and in, in a story from yourself but it's not taking away it's actually giving something to the contestant in that moment and did the two of you have any consciousness of, of striking that balance or did it just come very naturally within the environment i think it came very natural once again i bill and i talked about the fact that we are both naturally empathetic so and because we we've both been in competitions we know what it feels like to be on the other side. So we weren't so, you know, judgmental. <laughs> so thank God that wasn't, I, I think it was kind of like a sixth sense. We, we, we weren't really aware of it. And I truly believe, you know, the, the producers knew that coming in, that we were naturally, you know, these types of, you know, personalities. So it worked. And the other thing is, remember that, you know, the images that the that the viewer is seeing are really striking to begin with. So that puts the focus back on the contestant. And, and Tamara and I, you know, tried to bring in our, our own points of view or experiences that we had when baking or just in life. But um, we know that the camera is focusing on, you know, a really extraordinary dessert, even if it's only part finished. So that sort of always brings the, it always brings the subject back to the contestant. Yeah. 
And and with that empathy that you're mentioning as well, that also really comes across within the judging process as well, because there are moments, you know, you're not afraid to critique people and tell them when something isn't quite finished or a taste isn't quite right and hasn't quite landed in the right way. And yet at the same time, it still always feels encouraging. And was it important to both of you that it always stemmed from a place of, of positivity and critique rather than, you know, oh, this was just really incorrect and this just didn't work? Yeah, I'm so glad that you you said that because we definitely had that in mind. And uh, I hate bullying. I hate I've always hated it in the kitchen. I've experienced it, you know, throughout my career. And it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. And so we really believed in um, constructive criticism and, uh, you know, a teachable moment. And I think both of us were committed to that from the beginning. Yes, Mara, I always say it's it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And I definitely wanted to have that as, as my focus when I was, you know, constructively criticizing the bakers. And I've mentioned this before about Bill. He's a great teacher and a great teacher to me is someone who always tells the truth, but at the same time in their explanation of, of things that you need to do, they actually are uplifting you or encouraging you to be better. And that is what Bill did. And with that idea of, of it being how you say something and how you deliver it, it also comes across in terms of there's not a lot of holding for suspense, like who's going to go through to the next round, who's going to be eliminated. There's no unnecessary dramatic pauses to add tension to the show. It really is like, hey, like you're coming into the tent, you're coming into the tent, you're coming into the tent. The rest of you guys did a great job. Thank you so much for playing. Um, and I thought that was really striking because we often don't see that in competitions. It often is about that dramatic tension that you can really kind of capture by drawing out the timing a little bit was that something from the very beginning of going into shooting the first episode that was very clear to everybody in terms of the stylistic approach yes mara i have to say i'm really loving this interview because you are hitting all the <laughs> important elements that make this show different from all the other baking competition shows and yes they wanted it to be very positive this wasn't um, you know, going in, they did not want us to be negative, um, be very, you know, judgmental or, or critical because there are other shows, you know, like that. Their main message is we want people, you know, who love to bake to love to bake and to also know, you know, if it's a passion, if it's something that you want to do, go for it, learn, and you could maybe one day be just as good as a professional baker, as you saw watching, you know, the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that you brought up that sort of hokey uh, extra <laughs> drama that's added on to so many, I mean, not only baking shows, but every show. And, um, I can't say that there's not some of that here. I mean, I expect that there's a few times when, you know, uh, and the answer will come after hearing from our sponsor. <laughs> There's bound to be a few of those, but it wasn't dragged out, at least as far as as far as our role was concerned. And I also thought it was interesting that we actually don't see the judging deliberations. Um, and that, again, just felt like a very clear, specific stylistic choice in how the show is approached. What did those conversations look like going on off camera in really figuring out across the criteria of what you're judging for, how you were going to land on those decisions? <laughs> <laughs> Bill were, and I always agree, Mara. Yeah, the, poor, the, the polite word is they were always cordial. <laughs> We were very cordial. When you, when you hear the word cordial, you know, like there, that's the tip of the iceberg. And then there was everything underneath. But um, we respect each other a lot and, and love each other a lot. And so um, there might have been some some differences, but we always settled them amicably. We sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a natural part of, of the process. And and you were judging across the criteria of creativity, presentation, and execution. But in the final round, you very frequently have a guest judge who comes on and is there throughout the baking process and often comes from a world of having been, you know, really revered on social media and having had a lot of viral attention for their creations. Um, and so in that final round, was there a slight tipping point in looking a little bit more about the presentation aspect because you are having that dialogue and conversation about social media and how that plays into the culinary world? 
I think it was more about um, being original because people who usually, you know, blow up on social media, it's because they've done something where, yes, they've stayed true to themselves. They may have taken a version of, you know, a cake, a, a bread or cupcake that they've seen and that they've made it their own. So that was the main thing I was focusing on. Bill, what were you focusing on? Yeah, uh, totally. I think it's really difficult to predict who's going to go viral. Um, but that what Tamara just said is certainly part of it. That originality uh, is key. And um, and I was going to say technique, but I don't mean technique in that it has to be so difficult to achieve, but technique in the sense that it's very clean and it presents an image that people have not seen before or they have not seen in that way before. So um we had some cakes where they were like very simple sort of decorations, but very clean cut, like a cartoon almost. Mm -hmm. And then, and you mentioned the breads with really this incredible sense of, um, of, I would have to say beauty involved with these natural flowers. And also photography has become so important in cooking now. It's like, mm -hmm. can you photograph your creation well or not? And, if you can, you're bound to, you know, get a lot more hits on on social media. Yeah. And Bill, with the show in particular, you've mentioned how a lot of people come onto shows like this and think that they should really try something completely new, something that they've never done before, something different, but that actually sometimes it really serves you well to do something that you're incredibly confident in, that is tried and trusted, you know, and just because it's something that you've done before, it doesn't mean that it's not new to audiences and everybody else in the room. What do you think is the balance of, of people pushing the boat out and challenging themselves and yet also kind of relying on the skill sets that they feel very comfortable comfortable and confident in on a show like this? Yeah, I well, I, I never want to like curtail somebody's creativity or, 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 or you know, diminish them and what they think they can achieve. Um, but I, I always say a competition show is not the time to start, you know, learning how to pull sugar and, and try to do it on camera. It's just, there's too much pressure. There's not enough time. So um, yeah, stick with what you know. Um, and and plot out your time. So if you're on this kind of show, timing is very important. It always towards the end, you really feel like um, you can't finish everything that you started out planning to do, and that's okay. Just you know, take one thing off before you go out the door, as as we say sometimes in the show. Mm -hmm. um, just be sure that what you do present, you're confident. It's well done, clean, and you know, is going to have the effect that you're looking for. And with the dynamic amongst the bakers, obviously at the end of the day, it is a competition and people do want to win. And yet it never again crosses over into that space of feeling cutthroat. They're all just focused on their own creations rather than what other people are doing. And yet there is that kind of slight encouragement sometimes of like fun banter that comes with that. Like, oh, there's two of you making a carrot cake. Like that's a funny conversation that we can have in the room. And so how did you set about kind of fostering that type of, of banter and conversation that was gonna be entertaining, but making sure that it never crossed over into kind of cutthroat competitiveness amongst the bakers. It was interesting because at one point in the beginning, we we tested them a little bit to just see that where they were going to go with it. Um, and every single time they were literally, they said, well, my competition is is more about me. <laughs> it's I, I, I'm, I'm against myself right now in that clock. Um, but I think how we did it was we kept it light and, 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 and fun. And, yeah, we, we weren't yeah. pitting the one against the other or, or making comparisons like, oh, well, that person over there did such and such. That's the key, Bill, comparison. Yeah. And whenever you're bringing a group of strangers into a room and they're all meeting for the first time, there's always going to be a different dynamic. And, and some of the episodes come across with slightly different tones because of whoever the group of bakers end up being in the competition in that one. You know, there's one moment where you have all female bakers in the room. And then there's one episode where everybody's cooking breakfast food and there's kind of a jovial sensibility that comes in with that particular episode. Um, did you find that each each episode kind of really found its own personality and dynamic with those ways? 
Oh, definitely, there. definitely. The, the the mix of people was very important and they um, they sort of sized each other up when they first get in the room and then, but they don't have time to really, <laughs> you know, wallow in that. They're given the challenge and it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, the first thing they have to make 13 identical um, pieces. And so right away, they're really in their own world and and sort of scurrying around looking for, it was a very well-stocked kitchen. Um, and they obviously had some of the ingredients that the contestants favored um, because there was, it was just a huge stockpile of, of different ingredients. But yeah, they pretty much concentrated on their own, own little world. And you were talking at the beginning a little bit about some of just the unscripted moments and the, the conversations that you would have with contestants, but there's also a lot of really great dialogue moments that we see between the two of you. And in particular, as the series progresses, you know, and, and you got to know each other better, that also really comes across even more on camera episode by episode. Um, was it something where there was kind of a dedicated moment where they would, where the cameras would be with you at the side of the room and filming some of those moments, or were the cameras very much just kind of around the room and ready to catch those moments when they happened between the two of you they actually at one point had to separate bill and i <laughs> because <laughs> we would keep talking um when the cameras weren't uh you know recording and they wanted to get all the good juicy and you know um you know real content in the moment so they separate us for a little while and then yes they they put us on the side and said, okay, well now we're we're now we want to record. You guys talk about what you what you see or what are some of your concerns or or what you like. <laughs> but if, if it were up to us, we would yeah we we would talk all day. <laughs> well, we and we both love baking a lot. So and we we you know have have stories about it and favorite recipes. So it didn't take much to get us going. And it's a huge logistical feat and challenge to film a show like this, because even if you just think about the sounds of pans as they're being moved around, you've got mixers going, there's timers for ovens, and then you're trying to film conversations with contestants in the middle of that with all the noise that's happening. What were some of the, the logistical challenges or flow that was really necessary in order for the cameras to be able to capture everything they needed? Well, I don't know if it was burbank airport but some airport <laughs> nearby and yes. you could barely finish a sentence without having a plane interrupt you True. so that was I remember uh, that yeah. and bill remember in the beginning when we when we shot the show it was really cold and we were all outside and you have icing and you, you know you want to be able to to mold and, and, you know, to, to pipe it exactly the way you want it to. But it was so cold that a, a lot of the icing was, you know, getting really hard. And I really, I felt for the bakers in that moment. And yes, <laughs> Bill and I would be in the middle of saying something really important. They're like, hold, hold the plane. And you're like, okay, <laughs> hope I can remember this. But, you know, then again, it just made it that more, you know, fun. We we just went along with the flow and we both are just so grateful to, to, to do this show because we love baking. And, you know, you were bringing up before that some of the conversations that the two of you would be having, you'd be talking about recipes and talking about different ideas amongst yourselves. Um, but then there's also the added thing of, you know, Tamara, you have the opportunity to learn from Bill, from his culinary background and, and his formal experience. And then, you know, Bill, you're also learning from Tamara about, you know, more about co-hosting and presenting and, and that side of the world. And so what did you both feel like you came out of this experience learning from the other person? For me, um... I've always been very like type A when I bake or, or when I cook. And I didn't know that that actually was a thing. It's called mise en place. And I love the way Bill says it because he speaks fluent French. Um, but it's basically, you know, prepping your area and it just makes it that much easier to do what you want to do. You can have a little bit more fun instead of going, oh, where's that, where's that sugar? Where, where, where's, you know, where's the, the flour? And if you make a mistake, 
you know, sometimes you can just, you know, go along with it. You've created something, you know, different and new, as long as it looks good and it takes, it, it tastes well, you're fine. And, and uh, Tamara has years of experience <clears throat> uh, being on set and every different kind of show um, <laughs> she's done. And so, um, yeah, she just put me at ease. Like the, the same thing, like if you make a mistake, that's okay, it's taped we can do it over. Um, and uh, so she's just really fun to be with. Um, there's pressure to, you know, get things done on time, but um, she makes it very enjoyable. So to have that be my first co-host experience, uh, I, I really feel totally blessed. Oh, thank you, Bill. Well, kind of reverting to what we were talking about at the very beginning, I feel like the chemistry that naturally happened between the two of you just really comes across on this show. And it's a really, really wonderful format that, that really comes across with a lot of warmth and optimism and positivity and I think encouragement for people that want to try these things at home. So congratulations on the first season. I hope it gets picked up for a second season so the two of you get to hang out some more. And thank you so much to both of you. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. That Thanks was amazing. Much. Great questions. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, very in-depth. Mm-hmm.